Hello, I'm Jacob Connolly. I'm from the University of Leeds and I'm going to talk about our work to understand whether STIP, a method to select candidate persistent scatterers, can be used to identify pixels with variable coherence characteristics in time series INSAR. This work is supported by the following people, Andy Hooper, Tim Wright, Stuart King, David Beckart and Tom Ingleby. A large part of time series INSAR is selecting pixels that will give you reliable deformation measurements. So for rural areas where coherence may exist only on short timescales or not at all, coverage can be problematic. We've been investigating similar time series interferometric phase, or STIP, um, which has been developed by Narian et al. 2018 as a potential method to select pixels with varying coherence. STIP compares the correlation between phase time series of neighbouring pixels for different time shifts. In the left panel we can see the neighbouring pixel being shifted by different amounts to the left and right. The right panel shows the summed correlation between the time series for the possible time shifts. In this case, the correlation is maximum when the time shift is zero. This tells us that the pixels have similar time series and the neighbouring pixel becomes a sibling of the central pixel. Applying STIP to a series of interferograms assigns a number of siblings to each pixel. Pixels that contain more stable scatterers, like buildings and roads, have a greater number of siblings which can be seen in the right figure. We have adapted STIP to give more optimal results by changing the window geometry as to not bias towards features in certain orientations, like roads and railways for example. Using the sibling relationships that STIP selects, we have been investigating coherence estimation and multi-looking. Comparing the distributions of the number of siblings for STIP applied to noisy synthetic data shown on the left and real data shown on the right suggests a mixture of distributions. We can make the assumption that the mixture of PDFs is of incoherent and coherent pixels. The noise data can be well fit with a log normal distribution as seen on the left panel. Scaling this to the real data on the right provides one method to probabilistically determine a threshold to separate noisy pixels from coherent ones. Here we compare the coherence estimation using STIP siblings and RAPIDSAR siblings. Since neighbouring pixels contain similar siblings, this causes some smearing for the high coherence pixels in the STIP case. Additionally, pixels with few siblings that should have low coherence have wrongly high coherence estimates. This suggests that in the current form, the STIP siblings selected are not optimal for coherence estimation. We can also use the STIP siblings to multi-look our interferograms. Here we compare it with using rapid SAR siblings and the standard boxcar approach. The bottom set of figures of the area are defined by the back box in the top left figure. The boxcar approach uses 4 looks in azimuth and 20 looks in range. You can see in the case of using STIP siblings for multi-looking, some linear features are preserved versus other methods. So we've been exploring the use of STIP and whether it has any advantage over other algorithms for targets with variable coherence. Comparing STIP on noisy and real data suggests a mixture of distributions relating to incoherent and coherent pixels. In the case of coherence estimation, Neighbouring pixels share some siblings which cause smearing, and pixels with few siblings have erroneously high coherence. Finally, STIP may offer some advantage in multi-looking, um, particularly with regards to linear features. And finally, thank you for listening, and feel free to get in touch with any questions.